Fixed income yields have trickled up, giving income-oriented investors a warm and fuzzy feeling. The medieval days of 0% yields are over, at least for now. Today's audience requested ETF battles, a triple header between two income ETFs along with one income closed-end fund. So which fund is the best choice for yield-seeking investors? Find out right after this. This is ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge. Welcome to the show. For new viewers, hit the subscribe button and join our community. And if you've been enjoying our originals like this one, along with First Look ETF and Portfolio Makeover, along with the others, uh, be sure to hit the like button. Now, if you have an ETF battle suggestion that you think we should do, send me your ticker symbols in the comment section below or on our Twitter feed, at ETF Guide. So today's contest was requested by a viewer named Robert Smith, and as a retiree, his chief concern is income, income, and more income. And you know what? He's not wrong. Because in retirement, it's income that determines your standard of living, not your account balance. And today's ETF matchup is a triple header between three income-focused funds, each with unique and alternative income strategies for generating high yield. So we've got CLM which is a closed-end fund from Cornerstone going up against TLTW, which is from iShares, and SVOL from Simplify. Judging today's high-stakes contest, we've got Mike Akins with ETF Action and Tom Ferrisagas with Bloomberg. Judges, welcome back to the show. Hey, nice to see you guys. It's good to be here, Ron. Thanks for having me. So our four battle categories are cost, exposure, strategy. We've got performance and yield combined. And then we've got a mystery category where you can decide whatever factor. Uh, it could be a single factor or multiple factors that you think are crucial to today's contest. And uh, at the end of the show, we will declare an overall winner. I've got the scorekeeping chores. Keep in mind that none of the battle outcomes are ever predetermined or known in advance by myself or our judges. So we're going to kick things off with the first category, which is cost. Mike, please get us started. First of all, we got three very different strategies here. So cost should be a very kind of low deciding factor. You always got to think about cost. Are you paying too much? But with respect to comparing these strategies, I don't think they're they should be thought of. That being said, um, from an overall expense ratio perspective, you have SVOL at 66, you have TLTW at 35, so basically half of that, and then you have CLM, which is ridiculously expensive and just loses immediately. Um, so that leaves us with SVOL and TLTW, um, and from that perspective, you have to give the nod to TLTW just because it's 35 basis points, but think about it, and I'll get into more on exposure and strategy on this. How difficult is it to replicate these strategies on your own? It is much easier to do TLT and write covered calls on TL, buy TLT and write covered calls on it versus what SVOL is accomplishing. So that kind of, in my opinion, reduces that gap of that expense ratio. And so it really becomes down to which strategy do you like better. Um, but from a overall expense ratio, I give the win to TLTW. Thank you, Mike. Tom, you're up next. Your turn in terms of cost. Give us your analysis. Yeah, those are all great points. And I think he nailed it is that you need to look at it in the context of what we're trying to accomplish right and there are different asset classes too right so um i think you brought up a really great point because if you look at tlt is only you can tlt is 15 basis points that you can buy so this strategy for only 20 basis points you're getting that that um sort of option writing on it um versus s file like except it's closer to 60 basis points again considering the strategy that what you're getting it's not all that bad but i think for for just sort of yield per cost let's just make up this metric and sort of looking at it that way i think tltw has the advantage here um it's pretty cheap uh you're, you're getting some pretty you're getting an interesting strategy for it. you're getting a lot of yield for it um so i think the the winner here is tltw that takes us next to exposure strategy tom you're still up so give us your analysis yeah and like uh like mike said they're all very different um so we'll start with s fall and, and the way i like to look at this one is if anyone remembers that infamous XIV one, which is like the inverse uh, VIX. Uh, Don't remind us. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm triggering some PTSD now for everyone. Um, so this is sort of a PG version of that in a way. Um, you know, you've got the S&P 500, but um, you've got that inverse exposure, that inverse vol exposure, which overall is a pretty profitable strategy. 
but you do have that tail risk, and that was a problem with XIV. It seems like that problem has been solved. It's sort of like the PG version of XIV now. So um, I like this. It's 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 as you can imagine, just that starving for yield play has has bode well for all these products. It's about 200 million in the uh, SVL product. TLTW has 115 million. So obviously they're pretty popular. The TLTW one is a little bit more straightforward. It's just writing far out of the money options on the TLTW ETF position. Um, and then uh, the close end fund. Uh, again, it's it's uh, it's got equities in it too. It looks very similar to the S&P 500, but then they're sort of managing their distributions. One thing to keep in mind with that one is the type of income that it's pushing out, right? Whether it's return of capital or whatnot. But overall, um, I like SVAL, the strategy. I like that. I think XIV, I think when people can overlook that, I, I've always liked that type of strategy. I think it's very profitable. I think when you have now a neutered version of it, it becomes very attractive when you sort of figure out what the what the shortcomings of it was. So well, in terms of strategy, and I like the equity component of it, I think just point about like TLT is the fixed income position. So within the equity bucket, I really like SVAL. And then overall, I really like the SVAL position. So and uh, I will give this one to uh, the Simplify uh, SVAL product. All right. I got you down for SVAL. Thank you very much, Tom. Mike, you're up next for Exposure Strategy. Give us your analysis. I'm so glad that Tom went first. Um, so 30 seconds is going to be tough. Here we go. Um, there are three very distinct strategies here, right? There are commonalities between two. SVAL and TLTW are basically creating uh, what I like to call derivative income or synthetic income, right? They're generating income through the use of selling short um, or selling options on a asset class. One is doing it on a benign um, treasuries, the other is doing it on the VIX, which Tom um, did a great job pointing out in XIV. The difference here, of course, is SVIX, he's trying to protect those crazy vol movements by buying call options on the VIX with some of the income being generated, which in theory they're trying to stay between, and I'll um, get into this in performance, but maybe a 0.2 to 0.3% um, of the return of short vol itself. So, you know, a very um, uh, muted down version, but generating a significant amount of income along the way. That's how SVAL is working. Um, if you look at the history of SVAL, they've done a good job, right? The beta is over the last year is 0.28, right? Between their stated objective of 0.2 and 0.3. And I say beta relative to the short VIX, right? So if you just look at um, SVAL versus SVIX, he has a beta of 0.28 over the last year, right in their guidelines. What that means is when SVIX, which is the short VIX all by itself, fully loaded, spikes 50%, or goes down 50%, you're gonna get a much smaller version of that. Um, so you know, kudos to them for managing that to this point. We haven't gone any through XIV moments yet, so there's always gonna be that question mark, and I think investors should be aware of that. Um, but SVAL, I like it. it. It creates a significant amount of income. It should be an uncorrelated asset class, um, so good there. Then you go into TLTW, pretty simple. You're buying TLT, long-term treasuries, and you're writing call options on it. Right now, that is kicking off an insane amount of income, right? So you're on an indicated yield of like 22% on this portfolio. Uh, but remember, we're also in an extremely volatile environment for interest rates. And the more volatility you have on an asset class, the more money you're going to get by writing options. So that, that income can be very, can jump around quite a bit, right? So you're getting this 22%. At some point, will that stay? But right now, it is a great way to, especially if you want to generate income and you want to hedge some of the downside risk of rising rates, which, you know, long-term treasuries will go down if rates go up. Um, TLT does a great job of doing that. It's an efficient way to run this strategy um, like it. CLM is a pretty large cap, basic um, <laughs> large cap value fund, and they're generating their income predominantly from selling securities. It's a managed distribution plan. Those of you that don't know about closed end funds, they, they publish these 19A1 notices. It basically breaks down to Tom's point, the character of that income, and the vast majority is coming from selling securities. It's not good income, if you will, and they're charging an awful lot of money for it. Um, so it's just out for me on this category. Exposure strategy, I'd much rather go buy a large cap value fund, sell, if I need income, I can sell it myself, generate it, pay the taxes, I can get income that way. It's a much more efficient way to do it. So that leaves us with SVAL and TLTW. I like them both um, from an income perspective. I can't pick a winner, especially in this current environment. 
Longer term, I kind of tend to S well. I think TLTW is going to settle down a little bit eventually, right? Right now, there's no short-term catalyst to think that rates are suddenly going to get good. So you're going to be able to generate a lot of income off that interest rate volatility using TLTW. S well is a similar story, a whole lot of income, um, somewhat uncorrelated. I like it. Uh, I'm giving it a, a split decision. All right. That takes us next to performance. And Mike, you're still up. So give us your analysis. Okay. So stick with the common theme here. If you look at CLM versus a large cap value fund, it is underperformed significantly. It's out. So that leaves us with SVOL and DLTW. You know what's interesting? If you look at just short VIX and take short VIX relative to, um, relative to the um, broader treasury market, so like TLT as an example, and look at the risk statistics, um, you know, what you'll find is over a long time period, so let's call it five years, there's a negative correlation, right? So you're actually, um, if you think about short VIX and TLT, um, they're, they're not correlated. It's a neg- on a 10 year basis, um, the correlation between TLT, just the underlying of TLTW, and SVIXI, which is the full exposure version of SVAL, um, it's a negative correlation. Um, and I think that is a good point to make with respect to performance here. You're not really comparing apples to apples, long-term historical performance. So I'm not even gonna do that because I think it's it's um, counterintuitive. Um, what I'm gonna look at is, are they producing positive returns? And the answer is yes on both cases. Do I think they can produce positive returns going forward? The answer is yes on both cases. I would think given the risk appetite, I would expect SVAL to have a higher risk return over a longer time period because of what it's doing, whereas long-term treasuries are not a, um, you know, long-term um, uh, generator of performance fuel. It's more of an income place, safe haven. Um, so from a standpoint of performance, I like both of what they're doing. I think long-term, if you're trying to capture more return, I think s is probably going to kick out a little bit more return, but with it more risk. Um, So that's the the key, right? There is no free lunch in our game. So when you talk about um, generating returns, you have to think about it in terms of risk. And I would guess that they're both going to deliver what they're trying to do, which is yield. And they're both delivering a significant amount of yield right now. Um, You know, TLTW is insane. It's indicated yield based on its last distributions, like 23%. Um, And that's because of the environment we're in. So a great way to clip that coupon, um, hedge interest rate risk because of the offset of the call option, s a similar concept. We're in a volatile market. They're generating a lot of income. So again, uh, I hate to, to do it and I'll get more into it when I get to my mystery here maybe, but uh, I got to give it a toss up between s and TLTW because I think they both deliver on their stated objective and you can't compare returns on two very different asset classes. Great points being made by our judges. Thank you, Mike. So Tom, you're up next and your turn. Your mystery battle category I'm sorry, before we get to Mystery Banner, I don't think we've done performance and yield for you. So uh, give us your analysis on that category. Mike did a great job. I think that's the right way to look at it because you might say, well, am I going to compare this to the S&P, to SVIXI or to whatnot? There's a lot of things you can, but I, I love his point about sort of steady income and his point about TLTW was spot on in that this might be the best conditions for it, right? So can it really get much better than that? I, I don't know, right? Because you, you have a high rate vol, you have a high, you know, rates are high. So, you know, um, you know, depending what the Fed does next year, this might be the best you, you're getting for it. Um, I really like the, the sort of the, the steadiness of the payout from s I think that's really important. I like the consistency of it. Um, the other thing to mention with CLM and these close end funds, you know, the, a lot of them can use leverage and so, on the upside, CLM has a big boost when things are uh, when the market is moving up. So it's just something to keep in mind. But to that point, it's trading a little bit of a premium. So you're actually paying a little bit of a premium for CLM as well. So when you sort of put it in that context, like what's the yield you're getting, the inefficient way they're paying it out, your premium, it's probably not the most ideal way to get that income. Um, and with TLTW, again, while the yield's very high, I don't know if that's sustainable. Uh, and then going back to SVAL, again, I. I like the consistency of the old XIV product when you sort of factor out then the the big tail risk stuff. I think it's a really attractive strategy. So they're all still pretty new. SVAL has been around for a couple of years. TLTW is very new. Um, And so I don't don't think we have a whole lot of track record to to look at sort of performance wise. But in terms of in the 
going forward, the consistency of payouts and income, I think S is a better product. And I think you're going to get it with that one over some over the other two options. So uh, for sort of yield and performance, um, I like S That takes us next to the mystery battle category. This is where our judges can give us that single factor or maybe multiple factors that they feel are crucial to today's contest between these three funds. So Tom, you're up. What is your mystery battle category and which of these funds wins it? Well, it's kind of boring, but it's uh, taxes. I think they're well, we're in April, so it's tax season, right? And so, um, you know, given that these are using derivatives, there's been some favorable changes uh, that they have made it more tax efficient to use derivatives in ETFs. That's why we've seen this, you know, big rush of issuers trying to bring out these derivative type products. I think quickly you can screen out CLM. Um, again, you know, the type of income gets paid out might not necessarily be very tax efficient. Um, looking at both of these, SVAL has been around for a while. It hasn't paid out a capital gain distribution. Just something to be aware of um, how they're managing these uh, derivatives positions. Sometimes not the most tax efficient way, but SVAL has done a really good job with it. TLT is very new. I think you have a little bit less flexibility in fixed income. So um, in terms of the tax aspect to it, I think SVAL has an advantage here. And that, um, again, for what you're trying to do, if you're trying to do this by yourself, uh, you know, you may not get that that favorable tax benefit within the ETF. I think SVAL has an advantage here. I like that they haven't paid out a capital gain distribution uh, at all. So they have an advantage there. Um, I, I might have done SVAL across the board, but uh, the mystery category being tax efficiency uh, will go to SVAL. Excellent. Thank you very much, Tom. And uh, we'll tell you what you did across the board at the end of the show. So stay tuned on that. So, Mike, you're up next. Uh, give us your mystery battle category. What is it and which of these funds wins it? Yeah, so I think it's interesting. When I think about these three strategies, it's great that they're all different. Um, it's a great way to think about a battle. I guess I'm so used to comparing you know, two ETFs that are accomplishing the same thing. What's the difference? Which one do I like best? Who's doing it better? Here we're talking about three very different asset classes, and I think it brings home the point of, you know, generating income is no different than generating returns, and that you want to diversify that income stream. Um, personally, I don't think CLM is the way to generate income through equities. I think you're better off doing a dividend ETF that's got a super low cost basis um, and generate as much income as you can from that market. If you really need more from your equities, then sell them yourself and generate it. I'm not a big fan of the managed distribution plan. I think you're paying a lot. Um, for not a very complicated concept. Um, so to that extent, at least as SVAL and SVIXI, two very different products. I already brought up the correlation concept. So in my mind, they pair well together. Um, and I think you have to think about it from a standpoint of what are your worst case scenarios? So when I mentioned early on, like there's still a question mark on SVAL, all I meant by that is I think that the call options should work, right? There's, it's math, right? And math is not gray, it's black and white. And they're, they're putting that protection in to get that 0.2 to 0.3% profile to the short VIX structure. But let's bring up that XIV point, back to that. And, you know, S VIXI has been around forever. ProShares, um, it, it didn't go under because it was a little different concept than the ETN that XIV was. Um, and so if you go back and pull that up in 2018, you know, it was down 90% in a week. So 0.3% of 90% is still 30%. So just keep that in mind when you're generating a very nice return. There will be at some point a vol event. And that vol event is protected with SVOL. And I think they, I, kudos to the way they, they structured that. But, you know, 0.3% of 90 is still a big number. And you, you have to keep that in context when generating that income. And I think that's why you want to have a diversified approach to it. So um, I like SVOL, I like, I like TLTW, both from a standpoint of generating income. And I like the fact that they're both very different. So I give them both, uh, sticking with my theme, a split decision. Okay, very good. And also that to your point about SVOL, Mike, it's one thing to have a stated objective. It's a whole nother thing to have a stated objective and to successfully execute it when there's chaos. So uh, that's uh, definitely a great point that you made about SVAL. Thank you for bringing that up. So we're going to give our judges a final opportunity to weigh in with their overall battle winner. So, Mike, you're still up. Give it to us. Yeah, split decision. I think uh, you got two unique products that generate a substantial amount of income, especially in the current environment. Um, you know, SVAL has got a longer track record, and they've done a good job over that track record of meeting their stated objectives. Um, so, you know, that's great. Um, TLTW is newer, but it's not, 
you know, it, the concept of like, I guess, writing call options on treasuries might be novel, but it's not in the sense that it's an ETF, right? It's the whole power of the ETF market. It creates multiple use cases for um, asset classes you wouldn't have thought of in the past, right? And so all they're doing is simply writing covered calls, right? It's a put right strategy. And um, in this current environment with the, the volatility and interest rates the way it is, it's generating a significant amount of income. So I think it, for those looking for income, um, not re total return, um, it's, a, it's a great product to look at. So um, pair them up together, find some others, some, you know, some traditional fixed income, some from tri traditional equity incomes. And boy, you, you pair that into a nice uh, five or six ETF portfolio and you got yourself a nice diversified um, income stream um, just from a handful of ETFs. So I like them both and they're my, my giant winners. Tom, your final chance to weigh in with your overall winner. Yeah, those are all great points. And I think I mean, I don't have the history of all your battles, but this is an equity versus a fixed income battle, right? And this is, they work nicely together, like Mike said. Um, they're not really, I think, competing for this necessarily the same shelf space. Um, but they have the, they, they have the, the, the whole, the main premise here is the income component, right? And even if, let's say, the, the better times are behind us for TLTW, even if rates go down, you're still going to be generating more income from this strategy, right? And it's a little bit more uh, cleaner, I think. Uh, like Mike said, it's a little bit more of a straightforward strategy. So um, I'm split decision here as well. Um, I think they're, I think in their context of their asset class, they're both really attractive and they're ways to get some nice income. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go split decision as well. Well, our judges have weighed in and according to my final, final battle scorecard, this is going to be a split decision between TLTW and SVAL and I got to say, Tom surprised me because I thought his winner was going to be S fall. But, um, you know, this is this is the way it goes down sometimes. And each of our judges made some awesome points. I think um, Tom's point about uh, taxes and obviously it depends what you what type of investment account that you're holding these these uh, ETFs and, and funds in. Um, if you're holding them in a taxable account, obviously, Taxes are and tax efficiency is going to be a big deal. And CLM, according to the judge's analysis, did not make the cut in that regard. Also, it's got a much higher cost. And it's also trading at a premium to its NAV, which is sort of a paradox because as if it's a value-oriented fund. So I don't know that there's many value-oriented investors that want to pay a premium for anything. Uh, but our judges on TLTW and CSVOL uh, agreed in many aspects. I think one of the big takeaways for me, besides all the other great points made, is income diversification. And we see a lot of investors focusing their income strategies on the traditional ways of generating income, you know, dividends as well as income from bonds. But take a look at some of these alternative income strategies that ETFs are offering in order to Buffer up and strengthen your overall income strategy. So great job to, to Mike and Tom for your outstanding and timely analysis. We couldn't have done it without you. Thanks, Rod. Thanks. This was great. Be sure to visit the description section below. We've got links to our program judges. And while you're there, check out the link to our program sponsor, Direction. Which ETF battle would you like to see in the next show? Send me your ETF ticker symbols in the comments section below or on our Twitter feed at ETF Guide. I'm Rhonda Leggy. Thanks for watching ETF Battles. We'll see you next time.